that sentence that I was going to say. Hence the reason uh, I, I ran for office as well. Uh, in Albany and in the 51st Senate District, I have uh, some ranking um, uh, positions on committees. I'm the ranking member on alcoholism and substance abuse. I'm a ranking member on the internet and technologies. I am also on the health committee, education, higher ed, and really important right now is the judiciary committee as well, where we are now coming to why I'm here. Uh, the legislation that was passed uh, pretty much like the SAFE Act was done. I'll give you just a little bit of a background there. We were called in. We knew six days in advance that the governor was calling for what they call an, ex, uh, an extraordinary uh, uh, session. Six days we knew. We, I came in on a Thursday at noon. By Friday morning at 2 a.m., 2.30 actually, we had nothing before us. We, we literally did nothing from 12 on Thursday till 2.30 a.m. Friday morning. Did nothing. Had, had no bill language. Had nothing. We were waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. They let us home. They let us go. I, I been, I'm only about an hour away from Albany. I drove home. Got a little bit of sleep. Uh, went back the next morning, and uh, we were back in session again at 9, 10 o'clock, give or take. I think we had conference at 9. We, we went back in session around 10. Uh, by about 12.30ish, we had the first batches of bill language that were coming to us. And as I said uh, previously, it took about 28 minutes to print, and we actually had about uh, a total of 40 minutes total to look it over and then vote on it. The same exact sequence that they used to pass the SAFE Act. Constitutionally, any bill that comes Constitutionally, any bill that is put forward has to age three days, giving us time and you as a public to look at it, review it, digest it, and understand it. <laughs> By using what they call the message of necessity, which is what the governor did, and it is exactly what the former governor Cuomo did to pass the uh, SAFE Act. They are making it out that it is such an urgent matter that the bill will not have to age the constitutionally accepted and require three days. That's the process that it went through. That was the process that they went through to basically attack and strip away our Second Amendment rights. I have had a concealed carry permit since 1986. Today, the way this legislation has been written, if I choose to carry, if I choose to exercise my Second Amendment right, I will be a Class C nonviolent felon. I'm a member of my, my hometown EMS squad and, and fire, uh, volunteer firefighter. So when we would get calls for overdoses and I was on the rig, I would always carry. We sometimes were there if not exactly at the same time as law enforcement, we were there sometimes even earlier, and I was hearing. One of the things that I asked when we were there was why EMS and or first responders were not included in the overall uh, litany of those who were exempt from the potential of having a Class E being identified as a Class E felon. I didn't get a response goes to show you just how quickly, how uninformed, and more importantly, this was a, again, a top-down approach when it came to legislation. It wasn't a bottom-up. They didn't come and ask any of us. They didn't ask any of the legally permitted concealed carry permit holders uh, what their thoughts were. You know, they, they, it was simply a reaction to what the highest court, when we had our, our victory there, uh, to basically offset it. I will go over and touch quickly on some, some of the high points, and I'm sure this is going to open up more discussion, and that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll just give you kind of a Reader's Digest. 
the other thing is, is right now there's really, even though what I'm going to give you, these, this is what we were, uh, our council had gone over with us. But even this can change. Because we don't really know 100% yet. And, and I'll get into that. Because if you ask state police, if you ask your local sheriffs, you ask your, your local uh, pistol permit, uh, you know, uh, for, they don't know. They're waiting to hear what's coming down. We've asked for it. We don't even know. But this is what was presented to us as we as we went through. Um, so there's some highlights. The, 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 one of the biggest things, uh, well, we'll get in first into the training, this, this DCJS and, and the state police are to be the ones who are supposed to be overseeing and dictating how this is going to be processed. So some of the training requirements now for those of us that, that are, uh, are probably licensed. You're going to have to go through at least 16 hours of in-person uh, training uh, as well as another two hours of live fire, live range um, training as well. So a total of 18 hours will now be required as you go through your recertification for your permit. Uh, it's, it was every five years, it's now reduced to every three years. So every three years you're going to have to, to be recertified. Those will be uh, general firearm safety, safe storage requirements and general secure storage best practices, state and federal gun laws, situation awareness, conflict de-escalation, best practices for encounters with law enforcement, statutory defined sensitive places, I'll get into that here a little bit, conflict management, use of deadly force, suicide prevention, basic principles of marksmanship. I do not know at what level, because they are saying too that you will have to score at least an 80% through this process. 80% on what? Are we talking, uh, and, and if so, so why do I as, as a citizen, am I gonna be held to the same level that a law enforcement for proficiency and things of that nature? It's not outlined, we don't know the little questions that we have, don't know. 80% what? Uh, a score of 80% needs to be, uh, is it written? We don't know. This is what I'm saying. So there's there's the parts of the law that they set down, and we don't know the answers to it. We're waiting uh, to get that. Um, there are some issues with uh, disqualifying circumstances. One is, is, is mental health uh, issues. If you have either been involuntary or voluntarily under any type of a mental health uh, services, you won't be able to uh, proceed and, and get a permit. Unless you then go through a process where they will make the determination, and this will be via um, notice of re uh, for re revocations in, in this case. Uh, you must uh, you must ask in writing. It'll be back to you in writing. There is an appeals process, but uh, an applicant or license holder would be able to request a hearing to appeal the denial within 90 days of the denial or revocation. Now, I don't know how many of you through COVID had to deal with any of the Department of Labor and, and all those things. It was an absolute mess. My, my office in Oneonta, we literally did the work for them. So this right here with a 90-day it's just going to be an absolute debacle. It's going to be an absolute headache. And, and I'm trying to get my staff ready and educated for the potential that we see here. Okay? Uh, if, you've ever, if you've been convicted of any of the offenses in the last five years, assault in the third degree, misdemeanor driving while intoxicated, uh, menacing in the third degree, you won't be able to proceed and get a... Uh, even if you've had one, even if you've had your license, you, you will not be able to proceed. Uh, First Amendment issue. They are going to require that if you have social media accounts, they're going to require that you give us the past three years access to your social media account. It sounds like doom and gloom, but I'll add a little side note to that. 
Back when the SAFE Act was passed, they were supposed to put up this dat database, if you remember that, right? Mm -hmm. They still haven't been able to do it and accomplish it. So to have this in here, even as a requirement, I do not see in all feasibility how they'll be able to even go, if, if each and every one of us that is a permit holder that goes through and gives them our three years worth of, of social media accounts and everything, there's absolutely no way that they're gonna be able to process that. In, in all honesty, I, I do not see that. But again, what does that have to do with you? And they can use that as a potential to deny you. Right. And then we're into the 90 day cycle, you see what I'm saying? Um, this is some point of contact information when they were talking about how they envisioned it. The, the issue with this was they never got in touch with the state police and never really got in touch with our local sheriff's departments. So they're, they're wondering who's gonna do what, when, and where. We, we do not know. Absolutely do not know. Plus the funding. I, I was gonna get right into that the next thing. We're, yes, well, so, so the other thing that when we asked about this, because we'd already passed the budget, where's the money coming from? Where, where are you gonna get the money to fund it? Where are you gonna get the workforce? Where are you gonna get the...